Um, I think my biggest takeaway from today was that, well, two, two big takeaways. One, it starts in your own backyard. So what does your own backyard look like? Like it's very tough to work on diversity inclusion if you're sitting in the middle at uh, home and the only people you invite over are people that look like you, people that act like you, people that think like you, very, very tough. Um, they said where your kids go to school. And I think, I think I've had this conversation with both you guys. I pulled my kids from private school a couple of years and put them in the school next to our, next to our house since we didn't know anyone in the neighborhood because we don't live, live on the neighborhood. We live on a busy street. And so I had no, no sort of idea of what diversity looked like at the school we were going to. I know there was no diversity at the school we were at. Yeah. <laughs> and now my kids, as the white kids, are the minority at their school, which I love because they have come home with all sorts of questions that I didn't know I was going to be answering yeah. in kindergarten, first grade, fifth and sixth grade. Um, but it's given me kind of a whole new perspective and it all happened while I was starting this business, which I think has really bled over to this business. Mm -hmm. So big takeaway was it has to start in your own backyard. And then the other big takeaway for me is that even, so our company was the only one that raised their hands, Bryce and Katie were there too, about feeling like your company's doing diversity and inclusion right. Right, so not that you're ever gonna do every, all aspects of it 100%, but doing it right and making it a point, which I think we have done here. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, however, one of the things she touched on that I never even thought is even if you're doing it right here, like are you working with people that are doing it right? Are you choosing vendors that are doing it right? Because if you're not choosing vendors that are doing it right, um, then you're just still supporting doing it wrong. What was your biggest takeaway? Yeah, for me, um, intersection. So the inclusive part. Um, so I work in industry. I'm a financial advisor. I work in industry of a largely Caucasian white male, or yeah. even Caucasian male. And so um, there, there's been a point where you hear folks saying, "I feel left out now." The inclusion drive, the diversity drive. Yeah. I'm feeling left out. I don't mind feeling part of the team. And they really hit on that intersection. Like everyone's diverse in some way or form. We just got to figure that out. Mm -hmm. and, and I really appreciated that aspect. It was one of my big takeaways and something I'm doing for my region out south for Edward Jones is we're doing a um, kind of an inclusive packet. Like, tell us about yourself. How do we relate besides what we put on and go to do every day? Yeah. You know, do we relate because we have kids? Do we relate because we go to the same church? Do we relate because we both, you know, backpacked Europe after college? Now, that might have been years differently, but that's something you can relate to, and that's yeah. how you can be inclusive. And so... Taking that back and adding, I, I took some really good notes about being able to add some other things to it. The he was taking good notes. <laughs> I do. I, it's the only way I can remember anything. I can't remember. Copy off his. Yeah. I'll, I'll send him to you. Uh, the second, you won't be able to read them all. But the, the second <laughs> big takeaway I had was um, it, it wasn't necessarily, I like the vendor part they talked about, mm -hmm. like who you're working with, but I also, I'm a big fan of reflecting your community. That's and true. so I, I looked at it, I just saw a stat this morning. Um, it was put out by Wichita State. Johnson County currently has, give or take, so forgive me exactly, about 46,000 Hispanic uh, folks in the city or in the county. The projection in 25 years is 148,000. Wow. So a triple, 100, <clears throat> over 175%. Move We're on. marketing, but we we got that that now. Yeah, it, 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 so <laughs> but, but the theory you. is, but yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but, how do I, how do, but how do we reflect the community <laughs> work? Get your finance. Yeah, yeah. that's, Yo, the, that's sure. the part. I, I, I yeah. think you know we always have to reflect where the money is, but we can reflect where the community is too, because money is pretty much universal. It goes to where yeah. people are. So. Which is what they did keep keep reflecting on, especially the man from Hallmark. Reason I wanted to pull you in sure. is because I think for me. Although the woman man thing has been something a hurdle to get over, um, I'm white, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't think I even realized it was a thing until I was in business. Like for myself, I didn't realize it was a thing mm -hmm. um, that there was going to be hurdles because I was a woman. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then what Jimmy's point was when we were talking when we were coming back is that he's Hispanic, but he's on the what did you say the lighter side? On the lighter skin. Yeah. So when he was growing up in his high school, he could fit in either way. So when he wanted to be Hispanic he could really push that Hispanic and if he wanted to push more into the white mm -hmm. and his point was um, a lot of times that because I what I said is that you didn't work here when I did spring break with my kids but when I did spring break with my kids we did a very um, we were very purposeful on making it a learning spring break mm -hmm. so we went to um, Montgomery Alabama we did Rosa Parks Museum and we did the um, Martin Luther King actual church okay. that he he preached at mm -hmm. 
And what I didn't know going into that is that was not that long ago. Like, I feel like we learned it in history, and history makes you think, oh, what happened so long ago, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But it wasn't that long ago. And so we started talking about that, and that's when Jimmy started saying, well, I remember being in high school, the Hispanic population. Yeah, it wasn't very large. wasn't large. It, 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 and the, the situation, I think, part of what we spoke about, so a couple of things. For me, personally, when you are a light-skinned person of, of diversity, mm-hmm. you can you do fit in, but yeah. then you, you hear things because they don't see you because they're not going to be a little bit more thoughtful about what yeah. they're saying. Mm-hmm. And you have to remind them, you do know that's where my family's from, right? Right. Like, you know, even to this day, not to bring up a controversial topic either way, but when someone talks about a wall, I'm like, you do know my mom and dad are from Mexico. Like, yeah. My dad still has a green card. Like, and so understanding because they're like, well, you're, you're really not Mexican. Well, yeah, yeah, I am. Um, well, and I, I found that's an interesting, a really interesting point because although I'm evidently black, I would be considered on the lighter side as well. Mm-hmm. And my mom is darker complected, but she was raised in in the in the inner city of Kansas City, so she wanted better. So her and my dad struggled through to get us to Lee Summit. Mm-hmm. So I was in you know private school. Then I went to the city for a little bit of time while they were working and struggling through to get us to the higher end suburbs. So I have that same situation. I've had, yeah. not anymore thankfully, but I've had that same situation to where since my parents put me in a good school district where they worked on, you know, not not to negatively talk about the inner city schools, but where they focus on, you know, um, reading comprehension better and, you know, more rigorous curriculums. Yeah. Um, you have a conversation with someone and I'll get comments like, oh, you're so articulate, you know. Or oh, you're, you're acting so- white. <laughs> that that is more in the laid back situation but if I'm yeah. in a business type situation oh well you're so very well spoken you know you're so articulate yeah. you know um you seem so intelligent and I'm <laughs> like well, as opposed to, to well today you know, the, and that's very frustrating yeah, and for sure. um the guy yeah. today said something so he's Hispanic the guy from Hallmark and he said something about he will find himself telling his um more Hispanic friend and uh his black friend that have both made it into the exact and they're very good friends and it's mm-hmm. always been over drinks but okay but now you're acting white now that you've had the exact team yeah that's the other side of the spectrum because yeah. then you have your people I guess for lack of better words um, that you know um, will say well what is this are you whitewashing like what do you what is this what so is where's this? the balance like how how can you be successful and how can we be diverse and how can we do inclusion without it being because Acting white does not mean it's diverse again, right? Yeah. Because then it just means if you're going to be successful, then you want to be white. That is not diversity. Right. I think the balance is freedom and understanding. Freedom on the side of minorities and understanding that you're not going to please everybody. That's true. So focus on pleasing yourself. If you want to be articulate, be articulate. And if your cousin from down the street doesn't want to, you know, learn the words that you're saying, and I'm not trying to say this in a negative connotation, yeah. of course, but if they, they think that you're too bougie or whatnot then live in your own freedom and then on the other on the other side of that spectrum for non-minorities understand that the 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 culture that they bring to your environment is important and you need that culture we were talking a lot about culture on the way here when you hear culture yeah when people say your culture right for jimmy it means oh it means food where you came from your ethnicity your family your language you speak um you know and and i was talking we were talking in the car for me, I, we stopped talking in the car, so we yeah. Can get so, yes, and this, <laughs> we knew they were in camera. This generation, I feel, has done a better job of being a little more colorblind. Yeah, meaning we we were growing up or we were raised where your some of your parents still were scared for you to be too too minority, too Hispanic. You got to fit in. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to sit with your people if not because you know mm-hmm. separate but equal. But mm-hmm. as we as our as our generation, the ones we're bringing up, I tell my seventeen year old daughter, she graduates this year. Be colorblind, but don't ever forget your culture. Absolutely. And then, then there you can have both. And that's why yeah. I think it ties back to that other question you just asked about how do you do it? So be authentic, be real. Don't forget where you came from, but love everyone. And you can still do that. Absolutely. You can still become too white or too black or too Mexican. You can still have your groups that you interact with, but there's right. nothing wrong with interacting them together. Have you ever gone into a situation, and I know your answer, so I'm going to ask you second. Okay. Have you ever gone into a situation where you went in – you kind of went in on defense because you were Hispanic? Uh, um, like you assumed that's what people were going to see first? No, no, I mean, I would have to say no. I mean, it's just because of my pure looks alone. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. it's very able to, to pay, move past that. 
I will say the the one thing maybe I've I've done or ran into in my life is understanding that when I say something culturalistic to my culture, I may get a deaf ear, yeah. right? And, and that may be when I'm when I'm doing a a seminar or something, I'll say something, and I'm like, you, I don't know if they'll get it. And, and, <laughs> but I but but the people I interact with do, and they yeah. understand that. And so that may be more aware. I, I would other than say occasionally when people get my name incorrect or try to figure out my name and so that i have ran into that they're like jamie and i'm like hi meg and they're like oh you're italian i'm like no no you're italian i'm like no and and that's that whole Mm -hmm. shift of like don't make me what you want yeah because i I don't have the dark skin but yeah my name still comes across that's That's interesting that they jumped to italian okay you want to speak to when you started here uh, yeah, so this was not my first corporate experience. Of course, William James Creative is more creative corporate, but... Um, I love that not, you call it corporate, like, that's big Yeah, for me. I mean, yeah. Um, big time. So this is not, you know, this isn't my first one, and my second one was more black and white, wear a suit every day. If you're wearing blue, you're being fancy, you know? So black tie, black mm-hmm. suit, you know? And um, it was a lot of... Uh, I don't even know if they fully understood that they did this, uh, but it was, uh, I, I feel like I'm okay, I can say this now. So it would be like West Side type mm-hmm. stuff and just yeah. little things. And it's like, they were, it, it, to them, it seemed as though they were trying to create inclusion, but it, you know, it just didn't come off the right way. And Do you think they hired it, you based off you were black versus based off you were Christian? Or do you think it just, it came off that way once you were there? I think... I think it was both, but in a way that was unexpected. I think they, one, I was qualified, but then two, I I believe subconsciously they were surprised that I was as qualified, Mm -hmm. so they went ahead and gave it to me. Yeah. You know, and then I had, I had the Cinderella syndrome and, um, what do you mean by Cinderella syndrome? That's Christian's daughter. She's sick. Bring. Oh, it's Delta. Oh, come on in, Delta. Come into our conversation. We're on video. Oh, sorry. Hi. Come in here. Actually, we're just about to talk about you, so come in here. Great. Um, <laughs> but the Cinderella syndrome. Because I want you to tell how this made you reflect on her. Oh, okay. She already knows that. We've talked about it. Okay. Um, this is Delta. Her and Christian work side by side. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the Cinderella syndrome is a big thing with millennials where we are qualified people. And then Cinderella or imposter syndrome is one and the same. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay, so I have all these qualifications, but now that I'm here, maybe they're going to think that, or, or maybe I wasn't, maybe I just put my best face forward and I can't really do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so now it's, um, when are they going to find out that I really can't do it? And now I'm like, now I'm afraid because now I have to be on my P's and Q's and I end up missing important things. Because I'm worried eventually they're going to find out that I'm not the person for the job. So that bad experience led to what original first two weeks here? Oh, man. First of all, let's tell people how you got your job. She just came in here. Yeah. Wanted to do... So Christian is getting her master's, Mm -hmm. which is awesome and was very strategic that she saw we were hiring for content. And although that is... She's no longer in content. She's actually our creative director, Mm -hmm. which is awesome. (laughs) Um... I didn't even know we were at the point we needed somebody this creative, but she came around the sideways where she said, which I was only looking at resumes for pure content people, so it was awesome that you did that, but she came around the side saying she wanted to do her thesis on us, which she still did, and then said, oh, by the way, I saw you're hiring, and I fell in love with her rather than her skill, so I said, you have the job. I didn't even read anything you had ever written, which I am hiring a little different, just at least off based skill products, but so it was a little bit different here, but then when you got here... Speak to those first two weeks. Uh, yeah, so I had this, I had experience and assumption, you know, ingrained in my head. I had this experience where I had a corporate, you know, job initially. And a lot of it people was, look uh, like this there. Yeah. Very cleaned up, pretty. And um, not only am I, uh, of course, African American, but I'm very, my presence is felt. Mm-hmm. You know, wherever I go, so I'm lo- like, I'm, I'm loud when I'm quiet. <laughs> and um, so I have, I'm big and I'm colorful and I'm vibrant and I was nervous because I had left the place where I had to compact all of that and make it seem like it didn't exist to going into, okay, I'm owning and I'm embracing, but I'm still afraid because what I had dealt with as an African American in a situation similar, but of course drastically different, in a similar situation where um, I think they're only checking a box. 
as opposed to, you know, really embracing me for who I am. So let me do the best I can at tiptoeing and not be too much of myself so that they can keep their box checked so that I can keep a job as well. So, so what was your immediate reaction about Delta? Oh, I felt like Delta was tolerating me. Oh, of course. I felt like Delta was tolerating me and she didn't understand anything. And I hate to say this. I'm sorry. She already knows. Uh, I, already knows I, I just felt like, you know, she was just like, okay. And how Christian. <laughs> how so. long before Christian start did you start? It was two weeks. Not long. It was yeah. two weeks. So Delta yeah. was still not being Delta, right? Yeah. And then you came in on defense. Totally understandable. To me, that was one of the biggest lessons because, obviously, I cannot, I cannot understand where mm -hmm. you've come from. I've dealt with my own stuff just being a single mom, mm -hmm. um, but I can't understand going into a situation as somebody of a different color, of somebody that has been through a situation like that. Um, Delta's also a single mom. However, Delta does present herself as she has all her shit together. Mm -hmm. Like, she just does. And that's part of why I hired her, because I needed someone to present themselves. <laughs> but I liked her because on the back end, there's was, there was some fun facts, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I still think nobody works harder than a single mom sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, fighting for their kids, or moms in general. Maybe dads. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. But. I know better than I know. <laughs> I know 17 year old daughter. No, <laughs> With that said, the dynamic, I watched it from over here, right? So I watched it. So we had those sit-down interviews, clicked. You were dynamic, and you came in here. and kind of changed who you were, mm -hmm. which I think everybody does to a sense when you're brand new somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, I, I, you, in your interview, you were very polished, and I didn't click as much, and I was just still trying to figure out who you were. And it was very interesting to me because... This was the last person out there that, that Delta was concerned about. There were some people that Delta actually came to me as being the operations manager that she had some concerns with, but your name never came up once, which is very surprising to me because I think you probably, from your eyes, you saw that Delta was backing them up and da 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 when more she was just trying to get them to where she needed them to be, and yeah. she wasn't concerned about you. Yeah. You came in and owned your job. Yeah. And I just found it very interesting that it was... It was all based off of our previous assumptions and learning. Mm -hmm. Is that how we all kind of ended up in yeah. that place? And now, Christian, you've done an amazing job of she came and owned it. And she said, this is where I'm at. I don't know how to get past this. I know that this isn't where I want to be. And I know I can be myself here. And it, it was awesome how she did that. And she's opened up to where we can have conversations like right. this at work. But right. that found it very interesting. That's why I asked you if you've ever gone in somewhere yeah. and felt... No, I, I think it, it when it does happen, and I, I should have added this earlier when you asked me, it would happen when I do start advocating mm -hmm. for inclusion and diversity. Because they're like, huh? I'm like, yeah. Are they like, why didn't you bring this up before? Yeah, well, I think it's it's not just that. It, it's hard when you're in the side of the room and you look like everyone else. You don't see that it doesn't look this. It, it's homogenized. Yeah. So when I say, hey, so stop our last meeting we were at, how many of us could raise our hand that were diverse? And they're like... Three. Mm -hmm. Just I know the number, right? Now how many women? Three. There's 76 of us in this group. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh. And so, but it takes them a moment. And I don't think you ever get pushback. Just like they they said today, it's about two prongs. You got to show the business aspect of it, right? Yeah. So that that aspect of it. And we saw that we talked about the buying power yeah. of future upcoming diversity. But then you also got to show though it's the right thing to do. Yeah. It's the inclusion part, right? It's the heart part. It's the respect part along with the, the business model, and that's how you have to merge them. But sometimes you have to open their eyes to one or the other. Yeah. Once you do that, they'll come around and start really being inside of it and, and going with it. And some honestly don't know how, and they go, I I don't, what do I do? Yeah. I go, I don't know. Are you, are you an advocate? Or are you more of a sponsor? Or are you more of a backseat? And they're like, what does that mean? I go, you tell me. Because I know there's several of my peers that are huge advocates for diversity. Now, sometimes they've married and they have interracial marriages. Sometimes they know friends and family. Or sometimes they just always grow up with a loving heart and want inclusiveness yeah. across the board. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what box that we've asked you voluntarily. Check a box if you like. Voluntarily. Male, female, if you know. <laughs> what it matters is do you have a heart for people and inclusiveness. 100% agree. Real quick, just so you guys know, since you weren't there today, um, there was a woman that stood up, and she looked like me, older. Um, but she's Russian. 
-hmm. And I found it very interesting. She said sometimes the culture part, people don't understand that on diversity. Um, and one of the things that I had no idea that struck a chord was, she said in Russia, you do not write cards. You do not write cards. Well, I know one of the things I've always done in interviews is, you guys know this, if I get a thank you card, I move them up to the top of the list. Mm -hmm. Now, I've never interviewed anybody Russian. Let's put that out there. But, um, or that I'm aware of is Russian. But it started making me think, is that maybe just a culture thing, depending on which culture and what your background is, and maybe that's not one of those things because I don't feel like interview training is going to be the same even in, first, there's not a ton of interview training out there. <laughs> Two, we've learned, right, as we're interviewing. Two, I mean, you may interview for, for one type of job one way and one type of job the other way, and you probably wouldn't always. To me, that was just crazy because I was like, when I think diversity and inclusion, and we have had this talk a lot out there when we're, especially as we're running campaigns, I think that we say, okay, yes, it has to do with color and race, but it also has to do with age. But one of the things I don't think that I've done a good job as a leader is realizing is you're black, but you're not from Africa black, and somebody from Africa black is much different than you, Absolutely. right? And for me just to say Africa, because I'm trying to think of somewhere else, people are black, that right there is a problem in itself. Yeah. I'm white, but I'm not from Russia, mm -hmm. right? So I just kind of, I found that interesting. Do you have any thoughts? We'll let you speak. You, you, so far, you're just kind of the disruptor of this whole thing. Sorry. That's cool. You just needed my charger for my laptop. <laughs> we got two minutes left of Jimmy's time. Um, I mean, I think that it's a huge issue, just inclusion and diversity in the workplace, especially, especially corporately across the board and I think people are like yeah check in the box we did that we did that and move on and don't discuss it again but how do we get people to have those discussions without advocates they today they kind of touched on that and they just said that it has to start in your backyard it like right here we're starting this right here we're gonna put this on LinkedIn I it's think another thing there. is don't focus so much on it. Yeah. You know, because there is a lot of people that are like, we're for diversity, we're for diversity, we're for diversity. And that can come off a certain oh, kind of way. Mm -hmm. It's like, we're doing this because, yeah, it's great, but we also feel like we have to. And it's like, we're purposely being diverse. And it just doesn't, it comes off, it can come off like you're not, it can come off not like a canvas kind yeah. of a thing. Okay. And I think it's, if you live it, just live it and just say, this is life. Yeah. You know, this is how we work. This is our work culture. This is my, and once people can see how happy and fulfilled and cultured and full of life and wisdom that you have, they'll want what you want yeah. and diversity will be a part of it. Then you'll have awesome culture like we have here. That's yeah, why you that's come right. hang out. All right, well, yeah. thank you for letting us take that's your totally time. Right. Thank you for jumping in when you guys had no idea what I was saying. Yeah. Thank you for including yourself. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Thank you guys. Yeah. Well,